You're watching The Isaiah Factor, Uncensored. And welcome back to the second half hour of The Factor Uncensored. Let's talk about industrial plants and manufacturers right in the middle of neighborhoods. It's a problem many are fighting, but it can be an uphill battle for the simple fact that there are no zoning laws and regulations in the city of Houston. Now, these concrete batch plants, according to critics, produce carcinogens, dust, and can be extremely loud. When they come into neighborhoods, are they mainly locating in minority neighborhoods? Well, you know, I, I'm not going to be one that's going to pull that car right now. What I see is they're going to they're going to find their way in the neighborhoods that don't have the resources. When you look at neighborhoods like Acres Homes that don't have deep restrictions, that don't have the wealth to be able to 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 um, to um, Engage Fight a back lawyer. Or push back. Right. They, I mean, they, they need to be able to engage a lawyer. They need to be able to engage the resources to fight against this type of thing. Um, so yeah, they find their way into these neighborhoods because there's no there's no there's no ordinance, bill, uh, or land restriction that prohibits them from doing so. Uh, and so yeah, it's it's very easy for them to move in the neighborhoods where there isn't a lot of resources. And so, yeah, so at the end of the day, when you look at it, so again, and the reason why I'm not seeing minority neighborhoods is because my other colleagues across the aisles, you're always pulling the race car. No, I'm not pulling the race car on this. What I am telling you is, is that what they're doing is they're finding their way in the neighborhoods that don't have the resources. So there are many neighborhoods in rural communities that also don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not located next to freeways. They're not located next to municipalities. They're not located next to where there's a, a need for a lot of, of, uh, of, of, of concrete. And so, yeah, if that happened in their neighborhood, when, when, when this new freeway or new railway or new anything happens in their neighborhood, it's going to find their way into their neighborhood. And they need to understand when the state allows these type of businesses to matriculate, it's going to find its way on your doorstep. So I, I tell everybody, it behooves you that we get in front of this and not behind it. Just because it hadn't found its way to your doorstep now, it will, because Texas is growing and those batch plants will need to be in those rural communities and they will find their way in the communities that are not necessarily minority, but there are going to be poor neighborhoods that don't have the resources. Now, they're approved and operated by the, not operated, but approved by the state. What would be your best advice for a community or neighborhood fighting these concrete batch plants? To, to stay on top of it. I mean, one of the bills that I put forth was to make sure that we, before they're able to, to, to move forward, they have to, to notify the community. Um, right now, the law only says that you have to notify people within 440 yards of the, the business. I've ex ex extended that to 880 yards so that the footprint is locked a much larger footprint so that more people would know about it but you have to be in front of this you have to know kind of what's going on uh, because they'll they'll show up at your doorstep all day long in the city of houston what you have is you have a lot of wait stations or you know one of those pass-through stations where they're not producing the the concrete but they're housing all the the the, the trucks and in those trucks, those trucks are then having to do multiple things that still leads to a lot of the problems that we have. Nine, 10 trucks on a piece of property, having to wash the trucks off, that dust gets in the air, the carcinogens gets in the air, the noise is there. All of those things are still there. It's, it's not just necessarily the batch plant, but it's also those, those stations where uh, those trucks are, are, are stationed in, in order to to go to then go get uh, the the concrete. So what what we need to do is to to be more diligent. Stay in front of this thing. Don't get behind it, and, and then be diligent enough. TCEQ. What I have demanded of TCEQ is that number one, we have to take a look at how what is the impact. TCEQ only looks at health impacts, and they don't look too too often too closely at that because in Acres Homes. Acres Homes has the number one calls to service uh, for asthmatic calls, people who are having asthmatic attacks. Batch plants are the number one cause of that. And it is, is statistically shown, is scientifically shown 
Um, but we have to make sure that those type of businesses can't just continue to, to, to matriculate in these neighborhoods. Because if we do, then they're going to continue to do that. Um, so when we look at those type of businesses, we have to, you know, again, when those type of businesses are, are, are the creation of many of the health issues that are facing Acres Homes and many other neighborhoods across the, across the city. Now, many of these plants, when they have, and I've covered this with you well back when you were in city council, and they've issued statements in the past saying that they are providing employment for people in the community, and they work closely with the neighborhood to ensure that they're not a bad neighbor. You know, I, I, if that was the case, I wouldn't be a, a proponent against them. I've oftentimes talked to, to, to these type of businesses. They are not community friendly. They're not hiring people from the community. If they were, we wouldn't have an issue. Um, I think when you look at what Fifth Ward was, what Acres Homes was, what Third Ward was, what Sunnyside was at one point, you saw a lot of businesses. Uh, you saw that the railway provided, you know, a great lifestyle for people who lived in Fifth Ward. The fact that this now Korea team is coming into the neighborhood says, wait, we need to stop this because it no longer is a benefit to the neighborhood. There are no more jobs coming into Fifth Ward and creatine still being there. And I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but we know that that, that carcinogen that causes cancer is there. It's no longer a benefit. You look at West Virginia. West Virginia produces all this coal, but at the end of the day, you know, they understand I can afford this type of lifestyle because of the, the mines that I'm, I'm working in. But if there's no benefit to me, then we don't want you in our neighborhood. There is no benefit to these businesses being our neighborhood. They are no longer hiring people from the neighborhood. You, you know, and as you mentioned about city council, you know how I've been about businesses coming into the neighborhood. You're gonna come into the neighborhood, make sure you're a benefit. Make sure you are a benefit. If you're not, then you can't be in this neighborhood simply to, to be here, but then from there, not be able to provide any type of source of income, any source of life, lifestyle changes to our to our community. So I, I am 100 uh, percent against these neighbor these these type of businesses because they're not benefiting the neighborhood. They're not in, infusing money into the schools. They're not infusing money into the parks. They're not infusing money into the into the community at all. And so they're just there. All right, State Representative Jarvis Johnson, we want to thank you for joining us on the Factor on Sensitive.